In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And you're all very welcome to our Mass as members of a congregation, and welcome to all of you who are joining us online for this celebration of the Eucharist. As you know, today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and the gospel passage reminds us very much of the mercy of the Lord. So as we gather in preparation for our celebration of the Eucharist, let us first with confidence turn to God and ask pardon for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. And in our Mass today, we pray especially for Antahar Shemus Oduhi, and also for Bridie and Michael Kavanagh of Main Street. So we pause for a moment as we remember them and pray for them. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, and by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any member who might be in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. The, the Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Response. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord, 
we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We shall be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not difficult, because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm sure some you had have noticed if you're watching the news for the last while, but this has gone on for quite two years. If you look at the news that comes in from Ukraine, 
you will see when an air raid is imminent, the sirens go off, and you see that the people run to seek shelter in places that are safe. And when it's over, then they emerge, come out to see what the damage is. And I suppose for any of us, when we feel anxious or threatened, our natural reaction is to withdraw to a safe place and wait for that danger to pass by. And that's precisely what the disciples of Jesus did following the capture, torture, and horrific death of their master. Despite Mary Magdalene telling them on Easter morning that she'd seen the risen Lord, they remained almost paralyzed by the fear and sense of failure that they had experienced over the last few days, and perhaps also a sense of guilt at having deserted their master when he needed them most. Yet Jesus, when he comes into their midst, doesn't come and blame them. There's no recrimination, but he utters the most beautiful words, shalom, peace, I give you. And the importance of this greeting is highlighted as it is repeated three times in our passage of the gospel uh, a passage today, shalom, peace, I give you. And that peace that the Lord gives us is not something that depends on our own resources. It is a gift from the Lord that enables us to live freely and even joyfully in the midst of strife, stress, and conflict. Having freed his disciples from the prison of their own making by his gift of peace, the risen Christ then commissions them to continue his mission of bringing peace, forgiveness, and mercy to the world. And so, dear friends, as the Lord came to the disciples on that Easter evening, so he comes to us today in the midst of our own fears, our doubts, pain, and confusion. He comes offering us his peace and breathing into our anxious hearts the empowering breath of the Spirit, strengthening us to continue his mission of bringing peace and forgiveness into the world of our time. Now, the second passage of the Gospel is most interesting because John, the evangelist, the writer of the Gospel, tells us that the Apostle Thomas was not there with the group of disciples when Jesus first appeared. In fact, it was a week later when Jesus came into their midst again and that Thomas now is with them. And as he appears to them for this visit, he openly bears in his risen body his wounds. And surely it is significant that Jesus does not hide his wounds, but invites the doubting Thomas to touch them. Put your finger into my hands, he says. Put your hand into my side. See for yourself. Doubt no longer, but believe. And yet I'm sure all of us are grateful to Thomas. We all can identify with doubts and fears in our lives. And in regard to faith, it is a normal thing to doubt. But it can also be a, a positive experience as we deepen our faith, as we search for meaning into our lives. The scarred body of the risen Lord is the ultimate sign of divine empathy. The glorified Christ identifies with those who experience, whose experience of pain, loss, trauma, and horror leaves scars that never fade away. And I'm sure all of us, in one way or another, 
have scars in our lives that we never fade away. Ever so often, we become aware of them. But the the wounds of the risen Christ reminds us that he knows, that he understands, and is with us in our pain. So today, dear friends, on Divine Mercy Sunday, and in these difficult and confusing times, we pray that we will all find solace, hope, and courage in the wounded Christ, the risen Lord. As the prophet Isaiah reminds us, by his wounds we are healed. Finally, dear friends, there is a very important message in the last sentence in the Gospel. The writer again, the evangelist John says, These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Son of God, and that believe in this, you may have life through his name. Do we believe? Do we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Anointed One, and that through this we may have life through his name? So I invite you please to stand now for the creed as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and go to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we entrust ourselves, our worries, and prayers to the endless mercy of God, confident that God's mercy may can never be indifferent to our, to our prayers. We pray for the Church, particularly those who continue to remain faithful during difficult times. May the faith and goodness of the people of God continue to inspire the church to be a church of humility, of love, and of peace. Lord, hear us. Doubts are a healthy and natural part of faith. Rather than unsettle us, may our doubts encourage us to keep questioning, to keep searching for meaning, and to keep deepening our faith. Lord, hear us. God's mercy is healing, renewing, and never-ending. May we entrust our various faults and failings and concern to God's endless mercy, trusting that God's love and forgiveness are always greater than any mistake that we might make. Lord, hear us. God has shown mercy to us so that we may show mercy to one another. May we seek forgiveness for what we have done wrong, And may God give us the courage and strength to offer forgiveness and mercy to those who have wronged us. Lord, hear us. Thomas wanted to see the marks of Jesus' suffering. May others see the hallmarks of Christianity in how we live our lives. May we always strive to walk in the light and love of Jesus and so leave others in no doubt that we are indeed Christians full of the love of Jesus in our hearts and minds. Lord, hear us. For a quiet moment, we pray now for our own particular needs. Lord, hear us. 
We pray for the faithful departed. We remember especially today uh, on Tahar Shema Soduhi and Bridie and Michael Kavanagh of Main Street for whom we offer this Mass. We also remember in our prayers those who have died recently for Margaret McWheeney of Knock and Row in England, aunt in law to Jerome and Cyril McWheeney and the late Christine Maxwell. Margaret's funeral will take place in Kiltober tomorrow, that's tomorrow at 12 noon. Also, we remember Siobhan McKeown, niece of Siobhan Karen, whose funeral took place in Cork on the 1st of April. We remember Mary McGillicuddy of Dublin, mother of Edith Smith of Ballyduff, whose funeral took place during the week. And also for Esther Maguire, mother of James E. Maguire, whose funeral took place last Monday in Drumreilly. And we also asked for prayer for Peggy Logan of Tully here in Balnamore, who died yesterday. Peggy's remains will be reposing in, funeral, in Smith's funeral home on Monday evening with a funeral mass celebrated here in this church on Tuesday at 12 noon. May these and all who have died, through your mercy, Lord, experience new life with the risen Christ, Mary, our mother, and all the saints in heaven. Lord, hear us. Merciful Father, listen with mercy and love to the prayers of your people. We make our prayer as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now, you may be seated. You may be kind enough to pass the baskets to the side aisles from the center aisle, and the children will bring up the gifts of bread and wine, which become the body and blood of Jesus in our Eucharist. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that the sacrifice that we offer today may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just your duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and by and in his rise in the life of all have risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together 
the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, given thanks, broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Given thanks to you, fellows, worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Martin, our bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and your faithful people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially those who wish to remember the day, Bridie and Michael Kavanagh, and Ontaha Shemus Odohi. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles, with Saints Patrick and Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together then we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. And just remember the words in the gospel. Jesus, gift, peace be with you. He offers that gift to us this day. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith and in love and mercy, I eat your body and I drink your blood. Let that bring me judgment and condemnation. But through your love and mercy, be for us protection, mind and body, and a healing remedy. This is Jesus, the risen Christ. By believing in him as our my Lord and my God, we have eternal life. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, stand drawn to my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Christmas bridge. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before our final blessing, just a couple of items from the newsletter. The Parish Pastoral Council meeting will take place this Wednesday at 8.30 in St. Bridges Parish Centre, so all members are asked to please attend. And as you know, today or in Divine Mercy Sunday, there will be the devotions here in this church will commence at half past two, and there will be an opportunity for receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation during the devotions. And uh, there's other churches where it's taken place as well, in Boyle, in Roscommon, and in Sligo, in the Dominican Friary. Again, a word of gratitude to all of who took, helped out with our Easter Holy Week and Easter ceremonies. And finally, just there's a, an event come, taking place in Ochnesheelan Church on the 26th, Friday, 26th of April, that's the Sweet Spirit Country Gospel Choir on the direction of Tish Dunleavy will present an evening of, of country folk and gospel and some classics that's in aid of the church funds in Ahawillan. So thank you all for being with us and uh, again our thanks to our choir and the beautiful choice of hymns for today and just again this Divine Mercy Sunday. So like St. Thomas we ask the Lord to strengthen our faith that we all could acclaim, my Lord and my God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God then bless you all and fill you with his peace, with his love and mercy this day and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our Mass is ended. We now go in peace to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.